What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're on KDE 6 Beta 1. I don't like KDE, that's just my opinion. Gnome is far superior for me. It's cleaner, it just looks nicer, and there's less bugs overall. But I wanna do this video to show you guys what's new. So if we head into more appearance settings, and we go into color, you'll notice that there's accent colors up here, and you can actually choose from uh, from color schemes or wallpapers or custom accent colors. I chose purple because I'm me. Now, the next thing is settings have been redesigned and reorganized, as you can see, input and outputs up here. So the most important things is usually dealing with your monitor accessibilities, mouse pad, keyboard, touch screen, things like this, right? And then you go down and you got your connected devices and you have your color and themes, your text and fonts, wallpapers, and so on. So that's another change. And um, if we keep going, there will be HDR support. I don't know if it's merged yet or not, but eventually there will be HDR support coming to KDE 6. Uh, there is a pull request open for it, I think. I don't think it's been merged yet. I'm not really sure. Another one is color profiles. As you can see, you're allowed to choose a color profile within Wayland. And KDE 6 is Wayland only, or will be Wayland only. Right now on Fedora 40, which is currently work in progress, if you use the KDE version, there is no X11. So that should pretty much tell you everything you need to know going forward into the future. And honestly, I'm okay with this. I'm on NVIDIA, and I have no problems anymore with... Wayland. I run custom patches that enable most functionality using explicit sync. Even though the driver is not enabled for explicit sync, it still fix, fixes like almost the entirety of the bugs that I've experienced, including fixing Wayland gaming with driver 545. So um, that's honestly pretty cool. And you could find that on the AUR, believe it or not. It's called um, NVIDIA Explicit Sync pretty cool i might leave it in the link in the description below i'm not really sure well, if i decide to well there you go if not remind it to me about in the comments if you're interested for a less buggy wayland experience in both kde and gnome next we need to re talk about the redesign edit menu for the panels so if we go up here and we hit edit you'll notice that this little panel is new as far as i'm concerned it's new or it should be new there's like an old one right here and it does stuff It's like you used to be able to just i'm not really sure this should be new right if not did they introduce this in 5.27 because i've never seen this before but this is pretty cool because usually you'd have to go to i believe like a little set settings button over here on the end and just like mess with floating settings and other stuff like that so i'm uh yeah, configure eight panels, see? So this is definitely new. Now, let's exit out of that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna run you through on that and we're gonna use my, my, my bar down here. So fix fill width goes like that. So you got a taskbar. Content just goes to your content. So it's basically like a dock. Floating, not floating. Uh, opaque, translucent. Or you can use adaptive. I go for translucent because I like translucency. Uh, another thing is always visible or dodge, go below, or auto hide. That screen position. So if we click this, you'll notice these giant arrows appear and you can put your dock on the right, top, bottom, left, whatever you want. It's all there. And your alignment is center, left, or right. So if we choose left, the dock goes left, right, dock goes right, and center. Well, there you go. Now, moving on to the next thing, the default look and feel is floating mode on the panel. So by default, this would be down here. Actually, let's move everything out of the way. So I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna set position. I'm gonna put you over here, all right? And then I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna set position, and I'll put you down here. Then I'm gonna turn on floating, and we're gonna turn you back to the default size, which is right about there. And this is what it looked like out of the box, minus the Arch Linux icon. And honestly, it looks a little bit better than the original default, which is, you know, not really saying much. 
So if we go back into edit mode, I'm going to bring this down to 34. Set position top. Turn off floating mode because floating mode does not respect windows. Windows will go underneath the taskbar and it's really annoying. We're also going to set position back here. All right, set position up here. I think I've killed my dock. Oh, uh, over here. Nope. All right, my dock is dead. We're just gonna. We're just, yeah. It's it's just gone. Sometimes it happens. The panel disappears. I mean, I could delete the panel or make it bigger. Translucent, floating, non-floating. Yeah, I don't think my panel's coming back. As I told you, there are bugs. I'll have to deal with that by logging in and out again. On to the next thing. Um, new default task switcher. So I don't have anything open and now I have to go open things. Like let's go open settings. Uh, let's go open, go overlay. Multimedia. Can we just do it there? All right. So we can't this over there. Actually, let me leave that here. Now, what this actually should look like is, I believe, it's not supposed to look like this. Let's go to Task Switcher. It's supposed to be a thumbnail grid. What if I disable that? Yeah, see, it's not, it's not doing what it should do. Let's hit apply. No, actually, let's do this. Hit apply. Yeah. So right now, I don't think it's currently enabled. But it's supposed to look like, let's see if I can get you a preview. It's supposed to look like this. This is it right here in a nutshell. So basically just copying Windows yet again. Thumbnail switcher. And if I go to install this, is it actually going to install? No, I do not believe it is. But they've deleted a ton of stuff from here, if you haven't noticed. So uh, there's also that. There's the classic task switcher. Medium round it. Medium round. I mean, there's lots of things here, but it's just uh, it's not functioning at the moment, I don't think. But if I click this button, it will appear, but you can't see it because it's on the other window. And that is unfortunate. But I can take a picture, I believe, just by doing that. And um, can I zoom in or do I have to save my picture? Save. Open Canadian folder. So here you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay. It's too bad it's not functional, but it is what it is. And having that open right now breaks settings. So... To close it, I actually have to open up the task switcher and I have to close it out. Technically, I can show you, I think. Ha! Ah. So there you go. That's what it looks like right there. I don't know why it's not functional, but it's definitely annoying. And to close it, as I said, you have to do this. Now, um... No more scrolling on the desktop to virtual desktops by default. I mean, that's good. I believe that's what, uh, how does that work? No, I don't know. I, I got to it before. I think it's, well, I mean, I just like, how do I switch over to it then? Just click here and here. That's very gnome-like. That is that is an exact copy of gnome right there. Let's delete that. I don't know how to show the last one. Uh, the point is, these are currently the newest changes. And if more come out, I guess I'll update my video. But right now, as I said, this is not very stable. I would call this beta. I would call this probably alpha at the moment in time. And the alpha, I would definitely would have considered pre-alpha. If you're going to go on Fedora 40, please remember that they're using the alpha version of it and it crashes all the time. Uh, it's very unstable if you try to modify things like I've done here. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, do all that cool stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit the like button. Seriously, help me out. YouTube algorithm is the most toxic thing in the universe. Thanks, Jake Paul, or is it...
Logan Paul. It's one of the Paul brothers. Screw those guys.